Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. It's a little wet here this morning here in Colorado, but we do have somebody join us this morning, Anthony Gelvin with Cimarron Trailers. Good morning, CJ. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Yeah. So what we've got behind us, Anthony and I are going to walk you through a 2023 Cimarron 2 Plus 1 Air Ride Trailer. Now, this is something in my 10 years of being here, it's amazing how this has just exploded and really has evolved over time. I mean, when I started 10 years ago, we had one two plus one and it was standard. It was a four foot front tack. It was no air ride. I mean, it was, that was it. And now we kind of typically carry about four to five on order, on hand at all times. You know, they really uh, have become probably one of the most versatile trailers that are out there because you can do so many things with them. And how you guys particularly set them up uh, customize them with air ride and different things that we're going to see as we walk through it has has really made this trailer really where 90 percent of the people out there could utilize this trailer in some way or another absolutely yeah it's got a lot of versatility to it uh, let's take a look at the drawing because i'll kind of point out a couple things that we've done so again instead of a four foot front tack we've gone to a five foot front tack uh, on this, we did a V-nose on this trailer. I mean, these trailers are taller. We kind of carry a 7.7 and a 7.10 tall. We like incorporating this V-nose. If you've ever pulled one, they're amazing. It, it, you know, our trailers pull so good with that tapered nose, and people say, does it make that much difference? You can really tell in the seat of that truck the difference with the V-nose versus that tapered nose. It, it's when we've all heard you can't even tell it's back there. Yeah. This trailer with the V-nose and the air ride, you can't tell it's back there. Yeah. And at some point here, when we get two of these, like same height, same setup, one with a standard tapered nose and one with a V-nose, we will do some testing. It might be a little rough. We might just hop in a pickup and drive to the Wyoming border and back and just see. But I'm telling you what, there's a difference between in miles per gallon. I hear that time and time again from customers it, as well. It absolutely makes a difference. If, if you look at just what it what's hitting that wind right there, I mean, yeah. it, it has to make a difference. So yeah. it, that'll be an interesting test. Yeah. So let's take a look at this, because this one's cool. If you watched our videos, I say it time and time again, a Cimarron is like a fingerprint. Every one of them is a little bit unique. We have different features we can put on these. There's different benefits to all of them. Uh, but one of the very first things, again, if you Take a step here and look at this nose like Anthony was talking about. Now, Cimarron's have an 8.2 long nose anyway. A lot of the competitors will have a 7.6, 7.8 long nose. But on their V noses, they usually come to a pretty abrupt kind of point to where this one actually still has a little bit of radius to it. But it makes a difference when we're pulling on these tall trailers. Um, but that is a very unique setup. Again, we'll, we'll run them in a standard tapered nose. We usually do about two and two of each in these air ride trailers. Um, but again, it is it has become a major, major uh, key factor on how well these trailers pull. And again, we will do that testing here at some point. Now underneath the gooseneck here, this is a nice loaded up air ride trailer. So why not put a hydraulic jack on this? This is the equalizer electric over hydraulic setup. And this one has the manual override. Right, yes. Anthony? Yes, sir. So this is everybody's had, unfortunately. You leave a light on, you do something, the battery's dead. So this actually has manual override. So in the event your battery's dead, uh, you're able to manually, like a bottle jack, has a handle where you can get this on your truck or off of your truck. Uh, so you're not stranded with that. And then get back to your home or your ranch, uh, makes necessary repairs to it, so. Absolutely. And like you said in that, you leave a light on, something happens where it drains your battery. So one thing that has become standard is a battery disconnect when you do this electric over hydraulic jack. And that is really important because when we go to unhook this, like Anthony said, if we actually accidentally leave a stall light on, tack light on, you walk away from the trailer, it's gonna drain this battery down. So when you unhook this trailer, the last thing you do is just reach up and turn this knob to the off position and it kills all power to it. So again, if we leave a light on, not a big deal. We've killed the power, so we're not gonna drain that battery. The other thing in this box, you'll notice, with it being an air ride trailer, is this self-contained compressor. So the air ride box is right here. And Anthony, that is simple to use, isn't it? It, it is it very is straightforward. real simple and the same thing. You have an on-off switch here. You turn it on, that turns your pump on. 
and you have a raise and lower. So lower is, if you're loading and unloading, it's gonna release all the air out of the airbags in it so it's sitting as low as possible. Put it to raise, that's in the ride position. So anytime you're traveling or moving the trailer, you want it in the raise position. These have leveling valves on it, so it's always gonna keep that trailer at the optimum ride height as you're going down the road. So if you hit a big bump, it may let some air out. Uh, as you load, maybe a bigger horse or an extra horse in this box stall that we'll cover later, and the weight goes down, it's gonna add more air to it. So you never have to go to an air compressor, pump this up. It's a 100% self-contained system. So on off switch, same rule of thumb, turn the battery off, turn this off, now there's no drain on that battery. Absolutely. So very, very straightforward as far as that's concerned. There is also a, a manual drain underneath the bottom here. Uh, what we do is when we turn it off, we lower it. You always grab a hold of this cable and pull. And basically, I, what I say is just hold it till you till it stops hissing at you. And it's letting that air out. Here in Colorado, when we get in those cold months, you know, that air can create condensation, which can then freeze, which is gonna cause maybe some cracks in a line, something along those lines that might just make it to where the system's not working correctly. Uh, so that's just a kind of a straightforward, we've done a very simple walkthrough video. It's about a two and a half minute long video. It's really, again, it's not complicated, it is very simple. That's the reason we use this air ride system. It's, a, it, it's very dependable. Uh, and it's simple to operate, simple to maintain. Absolutely. Now, one thing that we have done over the last couple of years is gooseneck drop walls. So, over the years, Fords and Dodges have had taller beds. Now, with the newer GM body styles, they've gone up about two inches as well. So one thing we run into, and I, if you watch the videos, I tell you, it is a homework project for you. Watch a new truck pulling an older trailer. One of two things is happening. There's no bed clearance and the trailer's running level, or we have plenty of bed clearance, but the trailer's running on its back axle, which we don't want. Yeah, that, that means that in their near future, they're gonna get some tire and axle placements. Absolutely, and, and you, you paid for two, let's utilize them. So, in the 2000s, early 2000s, the standard was a 47 inch gooseneck drop wall. Trucks got taller, trailer industry evolved, went to a 50 inch. We've seen it kind of again over the last few years. So this is a 53 inch gooseneck drop wall. Granted, we cut three inches into this area here, but we have an extra tall trailer, so it really doesn't matter. Absolutely. Now when you pull in with a new pickup, even if you have a lifted pickup, I mean, we've seen those instances where now we can level this trailer, have plenty of bed clearance, adjust our coupler how we need to, we're set. Uh, yeah, prime example, the trailer that, that I drove up here with is same thing, it's a new Ford F-250 mm -hmm. that sets tall, and the trailer had the 50 inch drop. I had no concerns going in and out of a gas station or dips. You know, I had that proper bed clearance, uh, the trailer rides level, so, yeah. and you guys, on the majority of your trailers like this, order them that way, yep. uh, and it just works on every trailer. Yeah, so. and, and again, like you said, I mean, listen, it's not foolproof. We're never gonna say you're never gonna get into a bed. I mean, there are instances, yes. and we hear crazy <laughs> stories on what's happened, but now we've reduced that pretty Absolutely. drastically by, by making that little step right there, so. Now, tack room on this one. Again, back in the day, this was kind of a four foot straight wall setup. Now we've gone in and ordered them with a five foot. And the reason why is it just gives you a little bit more room. And one of the options we wanted to put on it was this boot box here. So that's a 12 inch boot box. Fantastic for smaller miscellaneous items to store in there. You know, keeping kind of your floor a little bit cleaner and a little bit more secure. Again, it just kind of holds them in that area. And the other thing it does too, is it works as a great step if you do have to get up into this nose area. You can also sit down on it as a bench. I mean, it, it has a lot of versatility to it. But what, again, what we wanted was we wanted an adequate tack room here. Uh, we understand a lot of these jumpers will also carry a lot of totes, give you a little bit more floor space as far as that's concerned to be able to put those boxes in here. And again, there's a good look at that V nose. I mean, the depth of this and the width of that, even that, V nose again it doesn't come to an abrupt taper so there is still a lot of space in here for example if you wanted to spend a night in here you know a bedroll type of scenario sleeping bag there's a lot of room one person easily could fit in here if there's two of you that actually get along and like each other there's still plenty of room right there you do have the windows so you can see out you get that cross ventilation there and then up to the left is a clothes bar so again you can hang some clothes for 
you know, shows if you want to come in, change, you have this dressing area to do that. Behind me here is a three-tier saddle rack. We have three blanket poles as well. So on these pads, this is a recessed post back here. So I can move these up and down. I can change the sequence if I want. I can add more blanket poles if I want. I can add more saddle pads if I want. You can just do a lot of different things to it. If you don't even want them in here, you just loosen the nuts, slide them to the top, and out they go. We like to carpet partition walls just because we understand you're gonna be hanging some tack from these hooks. These are actually aluminum powder coated, so they're really durable. This is something you guys have evolved with over the last couple of years. These are a lot taller, a lot deeper. You get a little bit more width compared to those older ones. Absolutely, we made that change. You know, a lot of people had the plastic ones that can bend some of the heavy uh, head stalls and reins yeah. on there and do that. And also, like you had mentioned too, it's deeper. Uh, you can put a couple headsets on yeah. there if you're kind of double up and things like that. So uh, powder coated, so they're going to be very durable, like you said. Yep. Uh, we love them. Yep. And again, we like the carpet because, granted, this is an air ride trailer. You're not going to see as much movement on items in these trailers, but we still have the capability for things to move. And what we don't want is we don't want those scuffing up against an aluminum sheet, scuffing up the wall, scuffing up your tack. Also, it creates a lot of noise in those instances too, and we have horses on the other side of this. So we like the carpet, and then here in the middle we have a pass-through door. So you can actually work between the stall area and this front tack room right here as well. I know sometimes, you know, people at shows, they kind of almost use this dressing room, and they'll use this first box stall as almost a mud room, kick off boots and come straight in here if they need to. So a really good setup right there. You've got a brush tray on this door as well for your smaller miscellaneous items. And then on these tack doors, you'll notice that we have these welded hinges with greasers. I'll let you talk about that. Yep, so one of the things we do is, is we use an aluminum welded on hinge. And if you can see, they have a brass bushing in there. Okay, so it's gonna cut down the wear on that. And something that makes a big difference in, in you know, you get various opinions out there, but these have greaserts in them. So anytime you have something move, these are in a dirty environment. Uh, here in Colorado, you guys in the wintertime, salt and corrosion yep. and things like that, where that grease will get in there and keep that lubricated. We just don't have issues with any of our hinges and seizing because of that with combination of the grease and that brass bushing. Yeah. And these are used on our tack room doors, our drop down feed doors, any doors on this trailer utilize that system. Yep. And the other cool thing is on that brass, there's actually a groove that you guys have put the, in it too. So as you put grease to it and you open and close those, it's actually wanting to feed that grease throughout that entire hinge. Not just at the top just portion Just not at the it. top, absolutely. And then we put a fold up step on this. Now, granted, I mean, this isn't a, a extremely tall trailer, but that's a pretty healthy step from ground level up and over that bottom frame there. So we really like incorporating the steps. It's just easy. You're gonna be carrying those totes, you're gonna be carrying saddles, it's a much easier transition to have those full and it's steps a nice wide step you yeah. can get your whole foot on there it's not just a small lip and, and they're a strong they're not going to give when you step on them so absolutely and then anthony's standing right here on our side ramp so again we have this first box stall we've got the side ramp with the dutch store that goes over it uh, these are just fantastic so again we'll show you when we where we'll actually load horses but if you just want to walk horses right off the side you can this is great for other little miscellaneous storage if you need it. it. Absolutely, and one of the things, CJ, while we're here that I want to show on the ramp that, that we take and actually put a lot of thought into it, we use two different types of springs. So certain width of ramps, full height ramps, whether this is a partial with a swing over Dutch door on it, we have done a lot of testing and know what springs to do that because we don't want this thing to have CJ and I have to lift this up, yes. it's so heavy. So one of the things that we do is we really, match the spring with that size of ramp so this thing as you can mm -hmm. see it's yeah. nothing to lift this up so it's easy for children for smaller people to lift up and not have to get help doing well, it well let's be real the majority of this clientele right here is female absolutely so these things are as as you saw anthony i mean it is real simple and as you pick these up too and you get towards the trailer I can let go and it actually sucks into the trailer itself. It wants to go into and the trailer And we match, as you can position. see, there's only two springs here yeah. doing all that work. So we've really done a, work, a lot of work putting the right springs on here. Absolutely. 
Now, let's get back to these axles because we've talked about air ride. This trailer is equipped with it. So we have two 7,000 pound Dexter axles with the air ride system in it. Listen, if, if you pulled an air ride trailer and one of these newer ones, I'm telling you what, you won't go back. I mean, you incorporate it with the V-nose. These pull incredibly well. Um, I'm, and again, that is the most common feedback I get from customers. I won't pull another trailer without air ride. It makes a massive difference for these horses. You, it, it, people don't understand in the seat of the truck, it makes a difference. But when you're pulling, yeah. especially any distance, and those horses can get all fresh, their legs aren't swollen, they're ready to go. Yeah. I, I don't know that you can put a price on that, CJ. No, and, and think about the price tag of what we're putting on here. Absolutely. And, and your time and your money, and let's give them the best opportunity we can to go compete at the very highest level. And I'm telling you what, it does make a massive difference. Absolutely. On, and, and we hear it from customers that have our kit, that put the camera systems in them. I mean, we sold one of these just the other day. In the first trip out, she goes, it was unbelievable. He stood there. Didn't he bounce. didn't move. He wasn't mad. He just, he just rode. Absolutely. Looking out the window, totally content. Now, this we have this trailer lowered right now. So when we actually put it in the raised position, it's going to pick it up about two and a half inches. So like Anthony said, when you're loading items, tack, loading horses, let's keep it lowered because it changes the angles of these ramps. When we pick it up, it makes them steeper. They got to go up a little bit higher. Granted, it's not anything crazy, but again, let's give bit. them every, every opportunity Absolutely. we can. Absolutely. And if something happens to this air ride system, it's gonna sit just like it is sitting right now on rubber torsion axles and you can go. Which means the, the old air ride system in the past and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want air ride, it's a lot of problems, yes. things like that. In the event uh, you hit a road hazard and damage a bag or an airline or your compressor goes down or whatever the fact, this trailer can still be towed. It's not gonna, first of all, do any damage to your horses. Yep. It's still gonna ride like a rubber torsion axle. And you're not gonna damage your trailer and you can get it in and get it serviced. Absolutely, so kind of foolproof from that standpoint. Yes, I mean, sir. again, it, it definitely does help. And we have, when I hear customers say, oh, that air ride, I won't, I won't have it. And you start asking them questions and you figure out why. Well, they probably had a bad experience on one of the original air rides where something happened, they couldn't move the trailer. And Dexter's done a great job with this. The technology, just like everything, Air ride systems 20 years ago are, are so much different than they are now, yeah, so. Absolutely. Aluminum wheels are standard. These are actually nitrogen filled tires as well. So we're not gonna have PSI flu uh, fluctuations. You know, I mean, especially here in Colorado, I mean, it's cool today and it can get warm. And we, even in the winter months, we can get really cold and then, you know, 40, 50 degree temperature swings. So we're not having PSI levels fluctuate as drastically. There's kind of a misconception. A lot of customers think they can't put air to these you're totally fine, you can. Then if, if you have a slow leak, you get that repaired, you fill it back up with the nitrogen if possible. And then you have a one year, no question dust warranty on these tires through Lion's Head, who's the vendor you guys use. So Correct. road debris, blowout, catch a nail, can't be patched. You make a phone call. You make a phone call to them, they'll send you a new tire. So very, very straightforward there. We'll show you when we get to the other side, because we're kind of covering up with the Dutch store, but we got a drop window and a bus window. And then as you can see back here on our rear opening, we have the Dutch doors up above. Those are wraparound hinges. So they literally can go on the side of the trailer. If you want to run with those open, you can. They can lock in that position yes. if you want a little bit more airflow. But as you get to the back here, another ramp, Dutch doors stepping into this two plus one setup. So again, as you saw in the drawing, box stall. And then we have this rear stall area. Now. Anthony, I'm gonna have you talk a little bit about this setup here. I'm gonna go in and show them this divider. So one of the things that, that is an option on Cimarron, and obviously TransWest does a lot of this, is we put this divider on a traveling system. So remember when we talked about this is probably one of the most versatile trailers out there. So two plus one means two stalls plus a one area. Now we've got this set up where in the event you say you want two box stalls, right? Hauling married babies or whatever, a UTV in the back. You want to be, what are you gonna do with this divider? So one of the things you can do with this divider is pull a couple pins. And as CJ is gonna show you, it travels to the side of the trailer. will actually lock in this position so it's not swinging around, it's not clanging, making noise. 
We use a, all an AR latch system with an UHMW, so there's no metal on metal. And as you can see, that thing's solid against the wall. So now you have another big open area. You can close those gates. You got a box, a box, golf cart, side by side, anything in here. Again, it just adds to the versatility of this trailer, CJ. And what did that take us? It, it literally Few seconds. one I mean, person <laughs> in 15 seconds can have this trailer converted. Yep. And you guys have even designed it to where, as you can see, we've got these butt bars, chest bars, we've got uh, bag feeders up there as well. And the original ones, we'd have to take all that stuff off to slide it against the wall. But they've actually designed it to be snug against there. So we don't have to remove those items if we don't want to. Absolutely. So um, this can store on either side. So when, when they order the trailer, a lot of them, they like just on the right. But if you want to order it with it on the left, doesn't yeah. matter. But it'll store on either side. This one travels to the right side and stays out of the way. No obstructed ramp all the way. This actual center post mm -hmm. could come out. This gate stores against the wall like this one, and it can be one totally open compartment. Yeah, and, and we hear a lot of customers, you know, maybe they want to haul Marin Foles in these type of setups, or long distances, they, they're only carrying two, they want to give them a little bit more room. And again, it works as a box stall. And again, with this air ride, I mean, they almost feel like they're in the barn. I mean, they understand they're moving and they can feel a little bit of it, but not near as what they're used to. So Absolutely. It, it makes a massive, massive difference. And and this concept has evolved to what as well. I mean, you know, again, in those early two plus ones, I mean, we didn't even, this wasn't even remotely on the radar. I mean, it was just a standard divider. Period. <laughs> and, and now it's evolved into this. And, and again, we, you know, about those four to five that we have consistently on, on order, Four of them have air ride and four of them have this traveling gate because that's what people want. Absolutely. Um, it, again, the good thing about a Cimarron, you stated earlier, there's no one that's the same, but yeah. working with your customers the way you do, you figured out what the majority of people want in those trailers Absolutely. and you guys inventory those so they're readily yeah. available for their customers. Yeah, a lot of these and, and customers have found our videos and seen these walkthroughs and they call and say, well, when's the next one you got coming? Absolutely. And they put their name on that next one coming. Maybe they make a couple tweaks yep. and we can still do that. Now, let's, we haven't really talked about the composition and how this trailer's built. I mean, we kind of touched on a little bit up front there on those hinges, but we've got a couple things here that Anthony has in his hands. First thing is the floor. This is the deck that runs across the floor of the trailer. 12 inch deck piece extruded. Every cross member set four inches, so tongue and groove, double tongue and groove. Yep. Some competition does a single, it doesn't lock in as tight, so double, double tongue and groove. And then we've got what we call a V-truss here, okay? This runs the full length of this deck board, and it's connected all the way around, so it's actually an extruded part of this floor. So the amount of strength that this adds to this, so you judge strength of floor on how much actual physical material is there and the thickness of it. So we've added more material here with this V-truss. So every four inches, you have a support system in this. So you've heard CJ say it before, there's not a better example for you to understand. If you can envision your horse's hoof mm -hmm. anywhere on this floor, it's supported. There's gonna be no weak spot where that horse is standing where that floor is gonna give. And what that means is over time, as urine and manure and everything, other floor systems that don't have this bracing, they'll get tired in the middle there and that aluminum will actually sag a little bit and you get now urine settling in those and that starts doing bad things to the aluminum floor in the way of corrosion and, and pits and things like that. So this, and CJ will tell you, they take used Cimarron's in on trade because people are upgrading to different trailers, different needs. A 2009, eight, seven Cimarron, you'll pull up the floor, you don't see issues, it's this flat. Yeah, it's that, it, it stays that way. And this this has evolved over the years. You guys have continued to improve it over time and time again. I believe it was the 16, I think it was the 15 to 16 models or 16 yes. to 17 you went to this. Yes. Before then you guys had four inch centers. Yep. So it was actually the I-beams down. Before that it was six. I mean, you guys have evolved, but you guys have stayed ahead of the competition. Every We've had to, as trailers have evolved, they've got bigger, more complex. Customers are wanting to do yeah. different things with their trailers. Said, hey, let's let's stiffen up this floor just a little bit more. 
and engineering and, and we look at this and go, hey, this is really gonna add some strength to this trailer. So one of the things that Cimarron does and, and that I love working with Cimarron is we're never complacent. Every day, every week, what can we do different? We listen to our customers, we listen to our dealers, what their wants and needs are and things and can we accommodate those things? So all the time, we're forward thinking. What's the next thing that we can do? How can we make our product the best product out there? And this floor, when we went to that, is a, is a result of that. And the other thing too is, is every Cimarron is built with this. It doesn't matter if it's a two horse bumper pull, if it's a stock combo, if it's a straight stock trailer, if it's a two plus one, or a big living quarters trailers. This is the floor that every Cimarron trailer every gets. Every single one of them gets. And the other thing too is, he's got roof material in his hand. So Cimarron comes standard with an insulated roof on every single thing, just like in the floor that we were talking about. So he's got it right there in his hands. You can kind of see it on the camera there. So this is our roof system. And as he stated, every trailer gets this. It's a half inch thick. It has a composite honeycomb core in the middle and then a fiberglass top and bottom. The top is UV protected. So the sun's not gonna damage it. If it's sitting out in the sun, as it gets age on it, it's not gonna do anything actually has an R3 insulation value. What does that mean in English? What that means in English is it's going to be six to eight, minimum six to eight degrees cooler in this trailer than an aluminum skinned yes. trailer. Um, I like to use the example is when CJ and I are standing here, our heads are a long ways from the roof. Correct. Okay. When you've got a horse in here, their head and their ears are right by that roof. Okay. That's where the heat is. And, and a, an example is, uh, yesterday it was 102 in Oklahoma, it's supposed to be 103 there today. Walk out in there and get in these trailers and touch them at that yeah. type of temperature. I can put my hand on this roof on 103 degree day and it's not gonna burn it. A metal skin roof, you can't do that. Yeah. It's very hot. So again, comfort for the horses. Absolutely. Next thing, this is quiet. Yeah. So as, as a trailer gets some age on it, that metal is going to stretch and move on that skin and it'll get to vibrating mm -hmm. and make it's noisy. Uh, I've actually experienced it, ridden back trailer and heard that. This does not do that. So we try to make this area very quiet. Uh, you know, the latches, we use the UHMW, yeah. the roof, try to make it quiet back there. Um, yearly inspections on your roof, wh whether you bring it to Transwest, you do it yourself to have that sealant on the roof. You can walk on this. It's rated to carry 150 pounds per square foot. So it actually is a structural part of yep. the trailer, not just covering an opening. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and that's a great example on this roof here. When customers come in here on a you know hot day here in Colorado, where we're 95, 100 degrees on this asphalt, come in here at 5 p.m. and we'll take you to horse trailers that are sealed up, windows shut, doors shut, and we'll take them to a aluminum roof trailer, put them in the staller and say, you know, how, what does this feel like? And it's hot and it's stuffy and kind of takes your breath away a minute. And then we'll take them over to Cimarron and you can physically feel a difference. When you can tell the difference without using a thermometer, that's, that's it, a big that's massive. noticeable absolutely, difference. Absolutely. absolutely. Now when we've, and this has evolved as well. Uh, so what we did is, is this has the jail bars over the hip. We've extended it for a stud divider pads on each side and then we've made this front area this head grill area instead of having a swinging head grill we've made it solid again by moving it it makes it easier to move we don't have a piece kind of trying to move on this you know kind of break it in half as we're moving this divider and the other thing too is we have plenty of room to walk through this area as you come into this first box stall and i'll open up this one as well as you come into this first box stall area, there's more than enough room to walk a horse on and off. We've actually put a little bit more length in this box stall. The reason why is because of these doors right here, the last thing we want to do is, is have these open and open up in this open area for the side ramp. Absolutely. And as you can see how easy that is, I mean, it literally slides over. Like Anthony said, it's got the AR latches. So again, we're reducing noise. This has the same pin style and it actually goes into a piece on the floor so we can remove this you have one big box stall you can remove it pull your golf cart something like that into this first box stall shut it back up move your divider load your two horses and go to the show yeah it one of the again one of the most versatile trailers out here one of the things that i didn't want to miss pointing out is that trans west does is 
This has our OptiBright light system in it. Yeah. And so they've put extra lights in here. Whether you're loading at night or early in the morning, the barn, you don't want to be working in here when you can kind of see. Uh, and even you can see in the daylight, it's a little cloudy here, the, the difference the lighting makes in here. So Yeah, the lighting makes a big difference. I mean, you know, we have dividers that are going to somewhat maybe block a little bit of that lighting. But we like to put a lot of lighting in here because we have quite a few customers when we get these trailers here that we add a wireless camera system to them. So we've got a monitor, we can handle two cameras or we've got another monitor we can upgrade you to to handle four cameras. So typically in these, they like the two from the standpoint of having a reverse. They actually have a backup camera and then they put one in the stall. And, and again, that customer the other day, she's like, it was great, I can literally watch him. And, and the lights are on, so when you're traveling at night, I mean, you can see what's going on in here, uh, but it's a fantastic setup. And we love these OptiBrights. That is one of the things that when we're ordering a trailer, one of the very first things we upgrade to. And then you also have two-way roof vents in these trailers. You've got your drop windows, you got your bus windows, you've got these Dutch doors at the back. You can create a lot of airflow, a lot of air movement, keeping horses as comfortable as possible and cool when you're especially traveling in these real hot summer months. Now, we've got load lights as well. So there's an eight inch awning light at the back here. And then you'll notice up top there, this is a spo there's a spoiler up there. This is one thing we opted to put on this trailer uh, just because this will go be used as a demo for a little while by our owners. And they've got that on their current trailer and they just like to go really fast. <laughs> it's not exactly the truth to that, but that's our joke is it's the fastest trailer out there on the market. This spoiler does have actual use to it. If you live down gravel roads and dirt roads, you know this by your passenger vehicles, that stuff swirls at the back of the vehicle and you'll notice it on the tailgates and the bumpers. It just gets kind of nasty. You put your vehicle in reverse and it gets kind of foggy because all that stuff. Well, that's what happens to the back of trailers too. So if you live down dirt roads or you're driving in, you know, rain or you get into these snowy months, that stuff swirls at the back of the trailer and kind of wants to condensate back here. And, and what we don't want is we don't want that, especially if we have these Dutch doors open. It can actually suck that dust in, especially on our, our livestock trailers. It sucks that in and we don't want our, our animals breathing that dust. So that will actually force the air down to the back of the trailer and force that stuff away from the trailer. So it does have an actual purpose to it, not just our joke. Yep. Light switches, everything's on an individual switch at the back so you can run your side lights, your rear lights, your interior lights all on one. Very, very simple to use. You know, it's not just one and everything's on. You can yep. actually isolate what you actually physically want on and off on this trailer. Here's a good look at this drop window. This is, these are massive. These have weight to them. They are framed. So one of the things that about our doors and any of the doors we build, the reason our, we put this window size in this door is this, this is actually structure or yeah. frame of the door all the way to this window, yep. all the, all way, the around. way around. So when you close and lift this up, this is a substantial feed door. And what that means is it's not gonna tweak or bend. And when it seals, it's gonna seal tight because it's not gapping. The latch is on the side. And so some other trailers that they don't make their doors this way, on this top corner over here, it's latching here, but here it's not sealing. Where our door has the strength, so it seals evenly all the way around. Absolutely. And and these are items that you're gonna use every single time you probably use this trailer. So by having that strength, having that durability, these things are gonna hold up over time. And then you've got your drop down jail bar as well. Very easy to use. And one thing that you guys have recently added is those drip rails. It is, that, you know, we're getting a prime example of it today, <laughs> yes. CJ, is when this trailer's setting and that water comes off that top rail, we've got a little ledge on that top rail, but no matter how tight these seal, if water comes down and sets in that gasket, it can get a little bent. So we put a little rain edge right there and it just kind of directs that water away from it. And you're seeing it over all of our doors that we use, the side access door, yeah. the feed doors. And that's an extruded piece. It's not just a piece that you weld on after the fact. It is. So we have, you know, in excess of 160 different extrusions we use at Cimarron. So our belief is instead of kind of blacksmithing a part, mm -hmm. if we're going to put a part in our trailer, we want it designed to be structurally sound. 
we want it to look good aesthetically. Yeah. Um, so we have those pieces made and extruded so they, they all look the same on every trailer. Absolutely. They're easy to install, they're clean to install. That's the little extra steps that we take. Yeah, and one of the other things too is these fenders. These are bolt-on, these aren't weld-on. Unfortunately, accidents happen, yep. hit a road hazard, a tire goes out. Uh, when it does, it typically does some damage to yeah. a fender. Um, if you're mechanically minded or you take it to a shop, the amount of labor it takes to change a bolt-on fender versus a welded-on fender exactly. is extreme. So we try to make it, again, easy to do maintenance and care on your truck. Absolutely. Now going into that box stall, here's that escape door. You probably noticed it, especially when we're on the other side of the trailer, you can see through it. <clears throat> but this is great because you can access from this side of the trailer as well. Again, if it's all sealed up and you want to jump into that front, use it as a mudroom using that pass-through, you can go right through here. It also has the fold-up step for that reason. Uh, the other thing too is it has a drop window in it as well. So if you wanted to utilize that first box stall, again, maybe you're hauling something loose in there or we've even gone in and put tie rings towards the front of this. So if you do want to tie a horse in there, you can do that and they've got that drop window there as well. It is one of the things too, CJ, that I wanted to point out that we do you mentioned using this to come in and out of this yes. as a mudroom. Yep. So one of the things that, that we do standard on this door is what we call a paddle latch. So you can walk in and out of this door just like on your tack room. Yep. You can lock it from the inside. So if you come in, lock it, and you're going to go in there, it is still locked. But when you're going down the road, we put the safety of the butterfly latch as well so it's not going to come open. So again trying to make this trailer very versatile yeah if, if you do have a horse in that first stall and you have somebody who likes to play with things we don't want just this holding this door yep. shut that's it's our standard there. rule that yep. any door that we have in a horse compartment always has a butterfly or a cam bar latch Absolutely. for safety and then again these fold-ups are so easy they're on a gas shock folds up it looks clean it works well with the trailer and just the overall look it doesn't look out of place by any means uh, this one is a white sheeted trailer. That's standard. We can go to, you can upgrade to a silver metallic, a champagne, charcoal metallic, black, polish, custom colors. Custom colors. There is an upgrade to those, but you can do different colors if you want. This one's mill finish as well. As far as the extrusion, you can go polish. Uh, you just got to handle those a little bit different in washing them. Uh, but man, these are slick looking trailers. Very, very... Uh easy to pull not a big massive trailer and again very customizable yes. um, a customer can really get a blank sheet of paper and say i want some very specific things yeah. with this you guys have done a good job of listening to them so a lot of your inventory pieces match that already so. absolutely i mean we've had customers take one of these that's on order and say boy i want a i want an air conditioner in that front dressing room and, and i want it to be silver i want it to be silver <laughs> and okay you know, we're framed for an AC already. We need to put a 30 amp breaker package to it. We want to put a converter on it, put the AC and you're in business. Absolutely. You want some outlets in there to charge your phone? Got it. We yep. can do those type of things to these trailers. So again, this is a great setup. Very, very popular uh, as far as these two plus ones that we have been able to inventory. Again, evolve over the years. I'll give you the stock number on this one for reference if you are interested in it. It is a 2023 Cimarron North Star 2 Plus 1 air ride trailer. So again, it does have that air ride option on it. That stock number is 5N220099. We do take trade-ins, so if you're looking to upgrade, maybe you're even looking to go from a living quarters into something like this, we can do those trades as well for you. But anybody on our sales team can help you out. Our number is 303-684. 3400. Anthony, appreciate you walking through this. I know he's a little bit wet. I'm Glad not to too be bad. here. <laughs> Welcome to it's Colorado. Worth it. so, Absolutely. Yeah, so, thanks for tuning in and have a good day.